Oh, well, if there were no Premier League scouts last night, there was one big surprise as Port Vale proved to be something of a double-edged sword as far as Sheffield clubs are concerned. Mark Clement was there. They've seen a decade of decline at Vale Park. Mickey Adams is the third manager in two years to attempt to restore their fortunes. Pulling off one of the shocks of round one wasn't a bad way to start, even if it was against the team he supported as a boy. Well, there's a few family that were distraught after the, uh, the game at uh, Bramall Lane, but you know, I've got family in the uh, darker side of the city as well. You've seen it all. Yeah. Mickey Adams, is he yeah. the man to restore yes, your thoughts? Yes, yes. What makes you say that? Because that with the things is he's done. I think he's going to be the top man. Mm. What's, uh, tell me something, what's it like to be a Vale fan? Stoke away up there, you're down yeah. in League Two. Who? Who did you say? Stoke? Who are them? There'll be a decent crowd tonight, you know, and uh, the Vale fans will get behind us. It's my first experience of a, of a night match at the Vale anyway, and, uh, you know, I think uh, it'll create its own atmosphere, but, uh, you know, we need to do something to get the fans behind us, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have a positive result. Are you quaking in your boots? They've seen off the blades in the last round. You must be nervous as hell. No way. Go beat them easy. So, Boomer. Stoke in the Premier League, you're stuck in League Two. What's it like to be a Vale fan at the moment? Uh, everybody in? <laughs> you know the team, obviously. <laughs> After disposing of Sheffield United in the previous round, fans turned out in force at Vale Park, hoping that Lightning would strike twice. A chance here to clinch a Sheffield double, and the home side were given a helping hand, or should I say, headbutt and fist. Francis Jeffers seeing the red mist and then a red card for lashing out at Tommy Fraser. Jeffers subsequently transfer listed and heavily fined and seemingly on his way out of Hillsborough. Vale could sniff an upset and Doug Loft almost opened the scoring but for a fine save from Lee Grant. Rob Taylor's follow-up denied by a lick of paint. Just after the hour, Vale's dominance was finally rewarded, and how? Chris Taylor's long-range thunderbolt sending them on their way to a famous victory. Two minutes later, it was two. Mark Beavers with a sloppy clearance, allowing Lewis Dodds to cross in for Rob Taylor to send Vale through, and many will be hoping to avoid them in Saturday's draw. Extraordinary atmosphere. Yeah, the fans have been brilliant. I mean, they've got behind us, and obviously, it's got behind the lads, and it's, I think he's given us that extra little little bit to push on. I mean, to be fair, it's probably the best we've played all season. Third round, here we come. Absolutely Drop brilliant. It's like getting back to the John Rudge days. Absolutely fantastic. What about Mickey Adams? He's not doing oh, a bad Mickey job. Oh, Mickey Adams doing a wonderful oh, job. He's the future of Port Vale. Well, it needs a boost, doesn't it? You know, I mean, it's been in the doldrums for a few years now. Um, all the managers that have been in have tried their best, you know, on, on limited resources, and I'm no different. Uh, but you know, we uh, we saw a, a, an hard-working performance there, full of uh, endeavour, um, a little bit of skill as well. Uh, and I don't think that anybody uh, could take the victory away from it. As a Sheffield United fan, I'm sure Mickey Adams enjoyed that night last night. It's a terrific result for them. <laughs> oh, and well deserved as well. You know, and they, it wasn't a fluke. They played really well, mm. and uh, I'm sure Mickey would be delighted with that performance. What a goal by Chris Taylor! Oh, unbelievable strike, and you know, he surprised himself a little bit. Look how far it is—30 yards. You won't see a cleaner strike <laughs> this year. And uh, you know, the celebration says it all, doesn't it? No, I know Mickey's quick to point out that the fact that the sending off of Francis Jeffers didn't really act as a turning point because he thought they were in the ascendancy as it was. Mm -hmm. But Brian Laws is quick to condemn what happened here. He's punished Francis Jeffers. Obviously a veteran campaigner, he should have known better. Oh, it, it is absolutely ridiculous. When you see it, it just gets worse and worse. And Brian Laws is from the... He was brought up by, by Brian Clough, really, in the Nottingham Forest days. No nonsense approach. It was, it's good to see. Look, he's, he's find him. He's put him on the transfer list. It's unacceptable. It's nice to see. Francis has apologised publicly. Has he played his last game for Wednesday? You, you never know. You never know. But if he, if he is really remorseful and he, and he, he kind of reacts in the right way, mm. he's got a chance of uh, rebuilding his career there.